Hello? 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 Testing? Testing one, two, three. Testing one, two, three. Hey, how you doing? Hey, what's up, everybody? It's your boy, Tristan Barracks here, and I am super excited to share with you a new product that I've created to help you become a better digital storyteller. A LUT is short for lookup table. Now, a lookup table is kind of like an Instagram filter. It's something that you can apply to your video or your photos to give them a distinct look or feel. In this video, you're gonna learn how you can load up the LUT pack that I've created, both the Cinecut version as well as the vintage versions of the LUTs that I've created. One of the key things that you want to keep in mind before you get started is the type of footage that you're using. So the, the particular footage that I'm using in terms of all the LUTs that I'm creating is, is S-Log footage from my A6300 and the A7S Mark II. But if you want to use these LUTs on the, let's say the GH5 and use it in V-Log or use it for C-Log um, on your C100 or C200 or, or C100 Mark II or even C300 footage, you can definitely use these LUTs and they'll work perfectly fine but you just have to understand that it may you may need to tweak it here or there in terms of using additional layers to get the best uh, sort of outcome for your video footage all right let's get started so um, as you can see we are in Final Cut Pro and um, I use Final Cut Pro to edit with I love Final Cut Pro I feel like it's it's definitely um, an amazing piece of software it looks very simplistic, but it is super, super robust. There's a lot of um, options that you have, a lot of flexibility that you have, and it's just a matter of kind of looking under the hood and making it work. Down here, I have uh, a whole bunch of clips in my timeline, and I'm going to be going through them fairly quickly just to show you sort of the power and the uh, robust nature of the LUT package that I have put together for you. Um, before we even get started with that, I do want to switch right over to the two uh, websites where you can get free LUT loaders for Final Cut. Final Cut in and of itself uh, is a software that does not um, come with a whole bunch of plugins built into it. That seems like a, a drawback initially, but the cool thing is that um, Apple has, has been very progressive in terms of giving developers freedom to be able to develop a lot of amazing um, applications and, and additional plugins that you can add into your Final Cut uh, software. So you can really customize your Final Cut experience to really fit your editing needs and your storytelling needs. So if you go to Pixel Film Studios, which is an amazing website. They have tons and tons of plugins for Final Cut. Um, you want to look for the Final Cut or the FCPX LUT loader. Um, this is uh, free, as you can see here. The only thing, the only caveat with with um, downloading this particular LUT loader is that you do have to create an account. And once you create an account, you have to give your email information, things of that nature, and then you can download it for free. The other LUT loader that I have become a huge fan of is by a company called Motion VFX. And Motion VFX makes tons and tons and tons of amazing content um, for Final Cut, for Premiere, for Motion, for a lot of different editing um, softwares and purposes. Their plugin is called MLUT plugin. And um, you would just go on their website, look up MLUT, MLUT plugin and uh, you can download that you do have to create a an account as well um, but I really really like this plugin it's it's dangerously amazing <laughs> so let's switch back to Final Cut now and in Final Cut I have my first clip here of my friend O'Shane and uh, we were just shooting in a cool little art space in Toronto Toronto I love it. That's my home city. I, I shot this on my A6300 um, in a flat picture profile. I believe it's picture profile seven, so PP7. And the basis of this is S log with a little bit more punch to it. So it's not super, super flat, but it's not super, super saturated either. It gives you a nice sort of place to start. We have this clip here. I'm just going to go over to my effects 
button and click on the effects. I already have my LUTs, um, my LUT loaders already set up and established. Um, I'm gonna go under my MLUT by Motion VFX plugin, and I'm just gonna double click on it, and that's gonna automatically open up in my inspector window. For those of you that are wondering what is under this, what is this funky thing under my preview window? This is basically a waveform monitor. Um, I'm not gonna get too technical in this particular tutorial, but basically what you wanna know is that this is sort of the mathematical um, equivalent to what we're seeing here visually. So, I mean, if 100 is pure white, zero is pure black. And because this, this particular image is kind of stuck in the middle, it's not really black all the way or not really dark all the way and it's not really light all the way or white all the way, then that's why the waveform is kind of right in the middle, stuck in the middle there. So let's go into our inspector window here. Under MLUTs by Motion VFX, we have two options. We have um, MLUT library and we also have load custom LUTs. So what we're gonna do is because you've already um, purchased my LUTs. I'm gonna show you how to quickly kind of load in a look. So let's click on load custom LUTs. So right now I, I'm in my vintage, um, my vintage set of LUTs. Now, if you're wondering how I got there, you would just have to figure out exactly where you saved your, your LUT package. Um, but for me, I saved on my desktop. We have like vintage red fade, we have vintage red punch, we have uh, vintage clean, we have vintage golden sun, we have a, a few different options. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna go to um, find one of my favorites, which is vintage soft black. So now that it's loaded in, we can see that um, right now we pretty much have complete black on his jacket and on his hat and everything looks pretty dark. This is where the intensity um, slider really, really matters. So the intensity slider allows me to uh, decrease or increase the intensity of the LUT. Um, in this case, because the this particular vintage soft blacks um, is pretty heavy, what I like to do is I like to put it to about, I don't know, somewhere around 70%. A good sort of look to it. I, I kind of like it. it. It has a little bit of a retro vibe to it, but at the same time, the this the skin tones look good. Um, the greens look nice. Everything looks pretty punchy. When we uncheck it, that's our before, that's our after, that's our before again, that's our after. Let's go to our next clip. Our next clip here, we have our nice little wet leaf. I, I thought this was kind of a cool shot. I am going to actually use the Pixel Films Studios plugin and show you how easy it is to apply or load your LUTs that way. So when you open up the, um, the LUT loader from Pixel Films Studios, it's pretty straightforward. We have LUT loader, okay? So it's already defaulted to that. Right now it says there's no LUT. They do give you a Rec 709 LUT, which is nice. That gives you sort of a basic color grade. I'm just gonna hit none, and I'm gonna go to choose external LUT, which is basically like the same sort of loader that we had before. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna find Redwood. So I'm gonna double click on Redwood, and this is what Redwood gives us. So it punches everything really up, it intensifies all the contrast and all the color. In instead of the intensity, slider, we have a mix slider. And the mix slider is exactly the same thing as the intensity. It allows us to control how much of the LUT is mixed with the original footage. And we can go back and forth and kind of figure out what we like. I like, I like just clicking on the actual numbers and typing in a number. So I'm gonna put 75. That's kind of nice. So let's jump over to our next clip here. And I'm just going to add my LUT loader and instead of actually going to load custom LUT, the thing that I love about the MLUT um, plugin by Motion VFX is that you can actually go to this blue button, which is M Library. So when you click on M Library, by default, they give you about five free starter LUTs, which, are, which is nice. 
they also give you rec nine LUTs, which are basically um, categorized by the, ca the the camera that you're using. So if you're using a, a Canon camera and you're using C-Log 1, C-Log 2, C-Log 3, that sort of thing, um, it'll give you a whole bunch of different options to get the best um, sort of Rec9 broadcast appropriate balance as possible. So I'm going to scroll all the way down to where it says, oh, Tristan. Now, the thing that I love about this, this library feature is that you can actually load in your own custom LUTs. So when you, when you download the LUT, the LUT package that I, I created, what you could do is you can go to this import button. When you click on import, you'd go and you can select whichever LUT you want to load into the, the plugin. And then the plugin will forever have it inside of the library and you can actually name it by category. So this, these are my plugins or these are my LUTs. So I just called it Tristan and I have all of my LUTs set up here from my Cinecut LUT pack. Let me click on Cinecut neutral fade. So I'm going to click on that and by default, it gives me the neutral fade. And I don't have to go back to load custom LUT again and load another LUT to see another LUT. I can just click on the LUT that's already loaded in into my library and I can see the differences right away. Let's jump into some other footage. So this is DJ. This is DJI Osmo footage. Uh, this was just a this was a wedding I did a few months ago. And um, I just want to show you what you can do or how using the LUTs with different pieces of footage, how you would go about that. So I, I loaded my uh, LUT loader. I'm going to go into my library here. I'm just going to move my library down a bit. We're going to scroll down and I am going to go and I think I'm just going to play it safe and I'm going to use uh, Cinecut Balance Plus. So this gives us a little bit of a punch. Okay, so we have this here. I like it. I'm going to press OK. But now it's a little bit too punchy. It's like really dark, right? Like if we widen this out, it's super dark, right? It's super crushed, right? All of our shadows are pretty much black. So what we want to do is we want to just kind of reduce that a bit. OK, to a point where we feel like it's it's natural. So it still has a good amount of that LUT mixed in. But now what we're going to do is I'm going to hold command and press six. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually take, go to exposure, the exposure tab and take this and just brighten it up a bit. Boom. And then I can take my midtones and I can really create the type of look I want. Maybe I want it more greenish. Maybe I want, oh, this looks nice right about here. So it's a nice little warm tone, brings out the greens a little bit more. Or I could bring it down and I could I can make it more bluish. It, it just all depends on what I'm looking for. So let's go to our, our C log footage from the C100. I'm just going to add my LUT loader. I'm going to go to my LUT loader library. I'm going to scroll down, boom, boom, boom. Um, and I'm going to just do something dramatic, just something crazy. I'm going to do like vintage red fade. Now, again, as you're clicking on these, it may look really, really super harsh, but what you want to be aware of is you can control the amount of the LUT that you use. So you don't have to use the LUT at full intensity, right? So I'm going to use, I'm going to go to Cinecut Warm here uh, because I like, I like the warming sort of tones of this. So obviously it's too much. So I'm going to go and put it to maybe 50%. OK, maybe 50 percent is a little bit. Not as much as I want, maybe I want. There we go. Maybe I want about 60, 64 percent. OK, so just looking back, this is what it looks like without any sort of um, correction at all. Uh, this is flat C log footage from the C100. And this is it with the 
with the color correction or with the LUT. Now what I would probably do is I would probably go again to my press command six and go to the uh, color board under Final Cut and I'd probably go to my whites and just kind of warm up, warm up the image a bit, right? And my blacks, I maybe cool it, I maybe just cool down my blacks, my shadows a little bit. I just warm that up. You see that skin tone? There you go. So the skin tone's a little bit more, little yellow. But what I like about it is again, it's it warms it up. It makes her look alive. She's getting married. It's a beautiful, beautiful time in her life. So that's it. Um, that's the end of my tutorial. I hope that was helpful for you. Uh, firstly, I hope that you are able to find those LUT loaders for Final Cut Pro X. Um, those are those are the two LUT loaders. The links will be below in the description area. The first one is an M LUT by Motion VFX. And then the second one is by Pixel Film Studios Final Cut Pro X LUT loader. Those two are free completely free LUT loaders. They have different features that are good, some pros, some cons, but it's really up to you and what you uh, prefer. Um, and then secondly, I hope that you got some inspiration in terms of how to use um, my new Cinecut and vintage LUTs that were created specifically for you to tell your story in authentic and amazing ways. And also so that your, your footage can come out. Um, more cinematic and more impactful than it's ever been and just to help your workflow out so if you have any questions please comment below i'd love to answer them for you until the next time stay inspired keep creating and remember you're a digital storyteller